Hey guys, and welcome back to another educational video. Today we are doing some Smurf Q gameplay, playing against what I would assume is probably like a platinum or gold victor. And pretty much in this elo, you just need to be really consistent and understand that these players will be making a lot of the same mistakes over and over. Uh, a good example of this is anytime that somebody goes up to right click a minion and lower elos, they'll usually just give you a chance to hit them for free. So, send you an example, very, very good at doing it just because you can cast while moving. But when he goes for this caster minion, it's guaranteed I get like 70 damage for free, right? So just looking at those windows and identifying that they are just given to you for free all the time. Sometimes you're not able to take advantage of it because you will be weaker. But as long as you can identify those mistakes, you just get such a leg up in your game because you're just printing either damage or money. So tethering is such an important skill set, but against a platinum player, even they aren't very comfortable doing it. So I'm just using my range by moving, I'm constantly updating my effective range, and I'm forcing him to walk in. So I can also just force him to laser by just walking towards him and then walking backwards. But again, I'm just waiting for him to commit to this melee. Unlucky. But like vice versa, if I'm weaker than him, I don't want to be just walking into him. And it's always really bad to miss your combo spells because you get mana back by getting the splinter effect, so it's pretty much always worth to play off of that. And if you are going to be shoving into enemy tower early on, you do have to drop a defensive ward, otherwise you are going to 100% get ganked. 1 billion percent get ganked if you ever do this. If you're going to play for Pryo and you're going to play for this far up in lane, please, please, please place a ward. <laughs> You'll save yourself. And make sure you play on the side that you have vision on. So we see Kazakh's top. So I have two options. I can just lean on the side that he isn't. So by being over here, now there's a little bit more space between him and me on the gank. I could also let the way bounce back, and that way I'm forcing Victor lose CS because he has to walk further up in lane. Because it's not like we need priority, right? Because we know where Graves is and we know where Kha'Zix is. Being this far up in lane doesn't actually accomplish anything. A common misconception is that being this far up and pressuring them under towers, you're getting free damage. But if I let this wave stabilize over here, I can do the same thing, except he can't farm under tower with the safety of his tower. So these minions are going to group up as a result of that minion being there, and we're just going to let it push towards us from this point onwards. So if we want to get damage here, we can just play aggressively. We know Kha'Zix is on the other side. And I want this guy to laser the wave. If I get his flash, it's just he's kind of lost completely. So we get his flash for free as a result of pulling our wave, which is a conscious decision that we made. So as long as you're thinking about what you're trying to accomplish with your wave state, the better. Because oftentimes people will just default to pushing over and over, and they don't really get any value out of like what they're doing. So at this point, I'm trying to force him under tower because I'm going to tower dive him and force him to lose all this CS if he doesn't recall. So canceling his TP here, we know that Kha'Zix has already left because he recalled on vision. I'm going to wait for the shield to run off, and then I'm just going to kill him. Okay, let's get out of here. Waves slow pushing back to us. We get infinite value. Extremely nice. And pretty much we also get our boots. No, we don't get boots, but we get Lost Chapter plus Dark Seal here. Which is very nice. But as you can see, Wave is grouping up, pushing towards us. He has no flash, which means that he is a free gank right now. And we can just get infinite value. We can get infinite value. How crazy is that? It's so nice. So all I gotta do is be patient here. We do see Kha'Zix, so I don't need to be patient anymore. There's no way I get punished in this scenario. But when there's a very big clump of minions like this, you have to trim the wave to slow down the rate at which it pushes. Because if you allow him to build it up really fat, you won't be able to stop it from crashing into your tower. So this is a situation where you would auto a little bit more. And kind of the goal here is to find some damage as he's pushing towards you. Because he's more focused on wave clearing. And obviously we need to ping our jungler. If you don't communicate with your jungler, they don't know what you want to do. So at this point, I've communicated that I want to gank this guy. I do win my lane by myself just because I have an item advantage. But you see, I'm playing very poorly and I'm missing a lot of my skill shots that would have set up a gank here or a kill for myself. So being self-sufficient is just finding that damage so that you can actually print the next window. Because if I found that first QE or the second QE, I would be able to kill him at this current HP range. Like, my full combo does about 800 here. 
but I'm not always the, able to guarantee that I land Dark Spear to lead off with, so. Looks like Victor's below us because he's got kill credit. So we're just going to hug the top side of the lane instead. Skazix has to be on the bottom side of the lane right now. So he just committed a laser. Oh man, my auto got cancelled by the grab field. He actually would have died to that. Anyways, I'm going to focus on getting this way pushed in and reset so I can leave. He's already used his TP, so I'm just going to try to make sure he loses maybe a cannon at most. So a thing you can do that's pretty unique on Cinder is you can just pull the cannon. <laughs> if you ever need a fast push away, just pull the cannon and throw it. You'll be fine. Now I might lose a plate here, but it's more important for me to get a reset so I can actually get back onto the map. And if he loses cannon, he just loses 70 gold here, which is fantastic. So unfortunately, we do lose plate. It's pretty much a tragedy, but we are 33 CS up in lane, and it's slow pushing back to us again. So in this scenario... I messed up my lane, I didn't get a free kill off of Victor, but I am creating constant value for myself and I'm building up that advantage over and over. To the point where I'm basically up 65 AP for nothing. And keep in mind we're also running first strike, so we're printing value that way. So in this situation again, at any point, Graves could make the conscious decision to like gank my lane. If this was another jungle champion that had easier gank timers, it would be super easy, right? I kind of expected him to walk up for the laser. But again, you have to look for damage, because if you don't look for damage, you can't convert it to a kill. So the worst possible thing you can do is be ahead and not try to like create a situation where you can kill somebody off wave state. Because I am denying him a CS, but I can still print money by killing him as well. So he dies on the next one, so by finding those two valuable trades, we're now in a pretty good situation where we can get an actual kill by ourselves. And it doesn't really matter how well our team is doing on the side lanes, because at any point if they decide to play for mid lane, we would have just won anyway, so... Okay, unfortunately for us, we did not have enough move speed to get in. That's kind of the big problem with Magical Footwear. But if he stays here, I'm just going to flash QR. And we're going to take one plate, and we're going to run towards Lux here. That's really tragic, actually. I didn't know where he was exactly, so I wasn't able to play around it, which sucks. Wave is slow pushing back to me again, so I'm not really going to lose too much, but if it's a great roam, it'd be actually insane if we got the kill here. So again, slow pushing towards me. He's continuing to lose CS. We have a 40 CS lead. Value is infinite. Skill issue? Yes, it is a skill issue. We are about to get our W upgrade as well, though. Just realized our top lane 04. Nice. Yeah, I'm sure Garen's not going to one shot me with 2000 MR. <laughs> I love League of Legends. Every ping that he's missing, even though he's not going to move, just got to make sure that we. Covering all bases here. Alright, so I'm going to make a room timer here for myself, and I'm going to go look for a bot lane room. I can just blast going over. One more Q and then I ult. Nice. And then we're just going to TP back mid lane. And fortunately for us, we'll have enough for Sork Boots as well. Hopefully he doesn't get a plate here. That would suck. He does actually get a plate. If I get a QE combo, though, he's like not worth it for him. Nice. Okay, he's basically done for. So we saw Kazakh's top side, so we're going to play for a tower dive here. And we should probably rift mid here. Oh, 
<laughs> oh no! I don't mind running straight down because we already know where Kazix is, but this should be first blood tower maybe. Just gotta make sure I actually get this money. We do see Sano Bell alone, so it's probably top over this wall angle. I'm gonna drop a ball just so I have one in rotation. I don't know if you guys knew this, but towers get more armor and MR based on how many champions are around it, so sometimes it's actually worse to have somebody standing next to your tower, especially if they don't do a lot of DPS. So again, this game I'm going Shadow Flame because I am playing against four squishy champions. I don't need Seraphs because I'm not at risk of being one-shot by any of these players besides Kha'Zix, and that's coming down to this range. So as long as I play my positioning correctly, I don't have to worry about Kha'Zix that much. Bit of a tragedy here, though. I would like to set up some dragons, just because it gives us another win condition in the format of soul. I'm gonna look to kill him as he walks in the lane here. This minion's probably giving my position away, though. It's okay, we just need prior to make sure we can actually move the dragon without losing anything. Ooh, nice try. He's dead. Cinder is such an oppressive champion because your range and burst potential is so high like that. So as long as you're looking for like opportunities, you can find them. That's why it's very painful to watch a Cinder that isn't trying to create plays for themselves because it's just very boring. Because again, they will continuously like break these traditions of just walking into your range. And as long as you're willing to pull the trigger, you just get all this free windows of opportunity. So here at this point, I could just run straight bottom and tower dive along with Graves here. Unfortunately, oh, I'm dropping a ball, so I have another ball in rotation. I'm going to look for a double stun off WQ. And this should be Shadow Flame as well. Uh, you guys want to stay for this? Uh, dude, if that cancels his recall, I did waste a bunch of time right now, though. Should probably leave if your entire team is on rotation. <laughs> Whatever, though, I'll TP back if I need to. Just waiting in base to make sure I don't lose any money from Futures Market. And at this point you would rotate um, your bot lane into mid lane so that way they can contest neutral objectives like Rift Herald or Dragon. So that way you can utilize your TP because there's no way Victor ever matches me side lane and if Kha'Zix gets hit by a QE he just dies. So Pulling people to a side lane and creating more favorable positions number wise elsewhere. Super super valuable. Just kind of low key crazy though. I'm assuming Kha'Zix is top side of the map just because he's already cleared his bot side, so I'm going to look for a weird angle here on Victor, maybe. We're going to put our ball in the rotation for now, and then wait for it to recharge. Somebody pinged that there's a player below me, so I'm just respecting it, but I don't believe it. I hate when people ping without actually having information, because it just fucks with my decision making. Oh shit. She dodged it. I have E in 6. I can kind of wait for him to walk towards mid lane here. There's no way they have actual vision. He's kind of a gamer though. He's dodged it twice. He knows exactly what I'm doing. Cut him off. Oh shit. No luck salt either available. Bit of a time waste. It's all good though. Always make sure you steal cannons so that you can upgrade your splinters. I have ult in seven, so at this point I'm just gonna go and stay, even though Garen's behind us. I'm trying to get some damage before he actually gets towards us. I 
can't face check it. That's so sad. I uh, just got the 100 elimination. Like, literally, the splinter upgrade is clutched out for me right now. He is right there, probably. If you have E for vision, that would be. Wow, what a fucking lucky play. I don't deserve to live right there. I'm gonna wait for him to walk in and then QE here. Unfortunate. Luxult? Aw, oh, so close. Dude, we're just overstaying back to back to back to back to back to back to back. The Jinxult? Oh no, that's so tragic, actually. That's so incredibly sad. Uh, they don't have any MR items, so it doesn't really matter if I go Void third here. Sometimes you have to just do triple pin. For infinite value. But this is not one of the scenarios, so I can just scale with Rabidons and Amegis. Just get as much AP as I can on my combo. I actually have 905 gold off of my first strike so far. That's the equivalent of three kills just off of comboing. This guy should probably ult towards us instead, but I digress. I'm cutting off on the side here, but... Goodbye. Thanks for the Magi stacks. There's no vision in this bush, so he doesn't really know. Wow, he's actually super close on that one. I was trying to take advantage of the pink ward that we had in the bush to make him like walk towards it so I can look for a stun, but we just killed him too fast. Uh-oh. Almost got him, wow. I don't even know why I'm surprised. I'm 13 and 1 currently. <laughs> my damage output is matching my itemization. That's crazy. We still cannon and then we run? Perfect. And we're gonna sell D-Ring and we're gonna buy another rod. What you can do in this situation is you can stand behind the wall and just wait for them to hop over. Pretty much exactly that. Because you have full vision of them walking towards bot side jungle and you know they have no wards because they've been dead for a while. At this point, since we take a mid inhibitor, we have two options, which is to do bot inhib or to do baron. In this situation, I feel like just doing bot inhib is more safe. I will follow this up, but I don't have the necessary range right now. I'm just going to focus the tower instead. We don't need the fight. It's not a team deathmatch game, like, objectives are going to close this game out a lot better. They keep pinging as if they're TPing behind me and I'm getting scared. You can go first strike on Vex, but the thing is, at that point, just play anything else. They're scared of my range, man. As they should be. Oh. Got her. Nice. Dude, what a di diabolical combo, though. Looks like that is gonna be GG. Nice flash. It's actually really well done. Anyways, thanks for watching, guys. If you liked the video, please make sure to like and subscribe. It's been a pleasure, and I hope that you all have a absolutely lovely night. Bye-bye. We did it! Woo! We got a video! 